Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Endless Space 2 on the Reawakening Update. I'm JC Proton, this is Series 9, Episode number 22. We are picking up at turn number 62 and we're playing a standard faction of the Sophons on Endless Difficulty in a Normal Speed game. In this episode we are going to be having some fleet battles. We're going to try to wipe out the uh, Horatio fleet here for progress in the Forged in Battle quest. We've defeated one hero. Um, and what you need to do is, with a hero on your fleet, defeat enemy hero fleets. Uh, Hero-led fleets. Okay, so we've got one fight there at Nos that we're going to be doing. Uh, we have another down here at Ita, trying to take on this United Empire fleet and trying to wipe them out as well. Uh, you can see Gano is um, under attack, kind of being sieged, uh, this outpost. So we're at threat of losing that outpost, but we have ships en route. So we'll see if we can take down that caravel that's harassing us, troubling us. Um, probably take him out. And then we have a big deal happening over here. Um, we have the Bastion ship. Um, so on these, uh, if I go to Heckim and I look at uh, the ships, I'm not able to build a Bastion. But uh, in this update, you can update the design of the Bastion. So I previously come up with a design uh, where I was going heavy on uh, missiles. I was, I was doing like really heavy kinetic damage, doing a lot. Um, I've decided to change that up. I want to go with more balanced damage. It's way less damage. It's only 28,000. The, the uh, other design was like 50, 51,000 damage. Um, I want this to ship to be um, an almost invincible flagship that uh, draws enemy fire. And so that it's just like uh, almost undefeatable. And then it, it pulls all the, the, the attacks away from all the other ships in my fleet. So to that end... I have this module here, the Quadranix Lenser, which increases its chance to be targeted, and it also serves as an engine, which has five movement points on it. So we have that, um, and I'm going with double shields of Graviton shielding, which have regenerative shielding, adds uh, 6,000 shield reload each phase. So I have two of those, so that's 12,000 shields regenerating. Then I have two of these advanced plasmoid shields uh, each of those reduces critical hit damage taken by the ship uh, by 25%. So that's a 50% critical damage taken reduction. And then I have uh, double extreme or calcix plating modules. Each of those uh, reduce, uh, it repairs 10% of the damage absorbed. So I'm going to be repairing 20% of the damage that the hull plating absorbs. Um, I have uh, two uh, AGN slugs uh, as weaponry, as point defense, and, uh, and then I have two of the long-range extreme phased beams, uh, and those do 10% collateral damage, um, so that'll kind of splash some damage around to, to whatever it is that they're targeting. Um, so that's all pretty good, and then I added in uh, this module as well, the Quadranix Intensifier, just because it makes such a big difference. See, without it, it's only 18,000 damage, and these have a 5% crit chance, but then when I add that module in, uh, it makes a big difference. 28,000 damage, 20% crit chance, so very nice. And I'm mostly going with with uh, point defense is the the role of these two, and it's just really balanced, um, balanced uh, attack on kinetic and energy, and uh, my defense uh, is very balanced as well. Oh, uh, another really important point on this ship design is triple smart O repair bots, um, fifteen percent ship repair per phase so with three of them that's a 45 percent hit point repair every phase 
and then at the end of the turn, a 20% repair each. So 60% repair at the end of the turn. So we're talking about re regenerating around 14, 15,000 hit points per phase, and then another 20,000 or close to it at the end of the battle. So 105% ship repair over the course of each battle. Um, pretty darn good. That should be pretty tough. That's a lot of repair. And then the shields regenerating at 12,000 shields per phase. Um, it's going to make it tough to get through the shields. So it should be a pretty tough, nigh-invincible ship. We'll go ahead and merge all these up. That's funny. Yeah, that, that Bastion has a weird little quirk like that. It doesn't let you just merge it, but you can. All right. So um, to upgrade the Bastion is going to be very expensive. Uh, we'll need a little bit more dust. We're still a little bit short. So we'll circle back to that. Let's go ahead and get started on these battles. Oh, yeah, we're also going to be invading Virac. Going to do a ground invasion and probably take that system. All right, so uh, let's start with Horatio. We'll get these scouts in here. And we'll get this fleet in here. merge all that up and that gets us up to 13 points even though we've got a couple of scouts in there that don't do any any damage uh, they still count as command points so let's go ahead and let's, let's throw down against the Horatio here there Horatio is armed mostly with uh, it looks like an all mixed up there's uh, some missiles in there there's definitely some lasers and beams and stuff um, looking more specifically that one's missiles Guns, missiles, missiles, lasers, and lasers. All right, let's throw it down. So you have lots of messages. We'll go through those uh, in a bit. All right, power to shields. Um, I think if I go in close, see my ships... Um, they do a little bit better at long range, but short range is pretty good. Um, maybe, yeah, mm, sure, let's, let's try long range. Gravity distortion, extra hull plating penetration. I think we'll do pretty well at shooting down his missiles. So let's go for extra hull plating penetration. Seems like his ships seem to have armor. So let's 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 be better at I think we're gonna do better um, than him at shooting down missiles because we have more guns. So let's try to get really aggressive at getting maximum damage out of our uh, weapon systems. Go with a six pack here and a six pack here, and then just the two scouts out here. So these six packs are uh, a really good configuration for shooting down incoming missiles. So I think I like that. We definitely got an edge on him. Let's see how it goes, and we'll see what uh, tactic they decide to use. They're going with power to shields. Hmm. So the shields will be more effective, but and they'll stay at longer range, but, you know, shields are pretty effective uh, against kinetics, so I, I get it. Here we go. Okay, so here are our three fleets, and there are their two fleets. So I want to kind of see how we do 
There's no fire coming over here towards these guys. See how we do on our shooting down their missiles. Looks like a little bit's getting through, but not much. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, looking pretty good. Not much getting through. Okay, how are we doing against them? Yeah, we're definitely landing some hits. Yeah, I'm taking that one down. This one's taking chunks as well. Looks like our ships are doing pretty well. We're not taking very much damage. This, these, yeah, these are both getting chunks taken out of them with every volley. Here he goes. He's going to lose his upholder. ship so the question becomes can we take out these last two ships is the hero ship out of range nope we got them both Outstanding, so we defeated their whole fleet. And we'll go ahead and attack whatever this is here. Three Horatio population. Okay, cool. And we got a debris field. And it doesn't look like we lost any ships on that fight. Encounter remains. Twenty five titanium. Nice. Let's look at the math on that fight. Without the missed shots, lots of missiles, lots of guns. Armor plating for 30,000, shields for 17,000. We took 1,700 damage total. So lasers and beams. So looks like, I'm not seeing any missile damage here. So our, our guns were effective at shooting down all of their missiles, yeah. That's an example of missiles, if you don't go all in, um, they're not very effective. You have to, you have to go. You have to go hard, man. You have to go all the way. You have to go with a lot anyway. Let's see. This has movement enough. I can use these guys as a ferry fleet to... Yeah, I can come all the way over here. Let's do that. See if we can mix it up with anybody else over here. Just for a little bit, maybe. Just to kind of escort our fleets around a bit all right let's let these detectors out do they have any movement left no Interesting. 
We could go over here and mix it up with these guys. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll fly over here and attack the Vodiani just for fun. Yeah, there's a hero there. Why not? Um, maybe, okay, let's just move this fleet up here, and we'll guard, start putting pressure on him, it's a long way to go, right, yeah, 850, a lot of, lot of defenders there, so, siege modules, <clears throat> Gonna need some siege modules. Excuse me. All right, let's let's invade over here. You know what? Let's do the uh, let's do the fleet battle over here. Uh, so we're at two out of three of the forged in battle. Uh, let's bring the fleets in over at Eta. Let's see, he has 13 ships, 12 of 13 command points. He's a heavily missiles. Okay. So let's take these two weaker ships out of the fleet. 10, 1, 2, 3. Okay, we still have room for one more. So of those two... Squire has more hit points. They're both e roughly equal in damage, so let's do that. So that's a full strength fleet now. All right, let's attack. Okay, um, he has a little bit of energy weapons. I think we're gonna go see he has the, enough fleets that he can go in the bottom lane too so yeah I think I'm gonna try turtle this time we'll go six in the middle lane uh, that way it can support hopefully lane three fight if need be if he decides to stack the bottom lane pretty hard like I kind of want to go heavier in the bottom lane, but I guess we'll try going with this. All right, we'll see how this goes. Okay, he is going pretty spread out. Oh, he's doing kind of like me. Middle lane's the most. He's going power to shields. Interesting. So he's wanting to stay at long range for his missiles. Um, and his shields will be a little bit better than they otherwise would be. i absorbing uh, my my damage for me. Okay, I'm going to center on my middle fleet. see how we're doing on damage on missile absorbing or shooting them down okay see the power of the six pack right there here's the target and this guy only took a smidgen of damage okay and over here Looks like we're doing pretty well at shooting down the missiles. And then back here. There's the hero ship getting taken down.
Yeah, looks like we're doing a good job. Not many missiles over here coming at us. Yeah, very little taken, uh, very little damage taken. Okay, this turned out to be great. We're mostly shooting his missiles down, and our missiles are extra effective at. extra effective at penetrating I could have chosen looks like I could have chosen the um, the kinetic uh, plus plus so that's taken out so now we're down to just this lane over here man duking it out oh we got the cross lane fire sweeping in here Kaboom. Kaboom. Outstanding. Dude, we totally got it. We totally smoked them. Guns and missiles, armor, shields. We only took 1,800 damage. Missiles 324, just a little bit. 355 from lasers. 1100 from beams. Cool. All right, we completed the objective. We now have Behemoth Overdrive. So what does Behemoth Overdrive do? Oh, Berserker. Um, ships that are alone in a flotilla have increased damage on their weapon modules. 25% damage increase. Ships alone in a flotilla. Hmm. Probably useful on something like a behemoth ship, right? Oh, debris field. Oh, let's take a look. Okay, there's a debris field, but not a curiosity to explore. Okay, good to know. Same deal here. Nope, on this one, there was a, a thing to explore and not a curiosity created. So there you go. It could go either way. Ooh, this is a fun one. Um, invisible chains, uh, you get these, uh, you build three gamma analysis platforms, and if you're the first one to do it, I, yeah, it's competitive quest, so only one person wins. You get this, uh, virtual endless hero, who apparently is a seeker, so probably a good, uh, admiral. If I remember right, I, it's vague, because you, you don't see this quest in every game, um, I think he's really, really fast. I think he's really a uh, very fast uh, admiral, uh, I believe, if I remember right. Okay, I'm just going to get through some of these messages real quick, and then we'll do the planetary invasion. Okay, so we had a bunch of population boosts that ended. So that's Galvran, the Lumeris. The Harishims, the Zermasala, the Caltikma, the Sophons, the Horatio, and the Yusho. So what I'll do is I'll take care of that off camera, um, doing the spaceport trick, where I lift them into starports, uh, spaceports, whatever, and then boost them to conserve the amount of resources needed to boost them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. I won't bore you guys with those details. 
Oh, also, uh, I don't remember if I mentioned earlier in the video, um, I am using new recording software. I've been having a lot of problems with QuickTime. Um, it's, it's really been crashing. I haven't been able to record successfully with it uh, in days. Um, so I'm trying OBS out right now. So let me know if you observe any differences, improvements, or detriments, or whatever um, on the... Um, on this recording sound video whatever let me know if you see any difference at all or if it's just fine I know my sound does tend to be a little bit too low um, trying to work uh, on a solution to that as well so this guy leveled up cool Horatio is repairing treaty or something Calcaros, we're friendly now, and we're cordial with Calticma. So we get some stuff. You get a little bit of science, you get a little bit of manpower, you get a little bit of um, dust. Our purpose is to kill. You, though, will suffer as well. Yeah, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you, Cravers, man. You guys are far away. A diplomatic treaty. From first Horatio, huh? Stins a hand with this proposal, hoping you do not try to bite it off. Okay. Um, okay. So they're offering us 500 blue cap mold, uh, which is worth. What are you worth, blue cap mold? So if I had five. And then add two zeros, 31,000 roughly. It, the value goes down as you sell it. But uh, let's, let's just say 30,000 dust is what he's offering me uh, in resources. That's not nothing. Um, I came across this, I guess I had an epiphany. Um, last series where what ends up happening, here's how it plays out. Um, the, the end result is that you're probably better off just taking whatever they're offering because... If you don't accept their offer for peace, or I guess truce is what they're asking for, if you don't accept the truce offer, then they come back with a demand for truce, and you have to um, pay influence to keep the war going. Um, if you accept the truce that they're offering, and you just get those resources, then next turn, you can just declare war again, and you're going to spend that influence. So if you're going to have to spend influence either way, to keep the war going, you might as well get some resources out of it. So uh, I guess I'm probably going to accept the truce that he's offering, uh, even though it is a hollow um, truce that is dishonest, to be honest, really. Um, but let's see, I think I moved everything I need through that area. So sure. Uh, we'll accept the truce, the offer for a truce, for 500 blue cap. Uh, you know what? We're going to put that blue cap to work, bro. We're going to do it right away because this upgrade is expensive for the Bastion. Um, we need over 9,200 and we need... So we need 1,000... And then we need a couple thousand more than that to cover us who will be solvent for next turn. So, how much is 3,000 in blue cap? Okay, it's going to drop the price for blue cap. Okay, let's watch this price drop. Chunk. Oof. But it keeps us afloat financially. And lets us do the Bastion upgrade. Okay, so. Here's how he is now. 17,000, 18,000 hit points. He's got fighters and bombers. Uh, here's his defense. 17,000 shields.
Now he's got 30,000 hit points, 28,000 attack, almost 7,000 defense, 92,000 shields, triple repairs, point defense, lasers, full aggro, regenerative shields of 12,000 per turn, 50% less crit damage taken, 20% of damage uh, absorbed by the armor, repairs the ship, um, extra hit and crit chance, and repair of 45% of the ship's hit points every phase of the battle, with a 60% repair at the end of the battle. I'm feeling pretty good about that, not going to lie. All right, let's let's uh, let's go fly north. And this is going to be progress towards the quest. Uh, there it is. Final Absolution. And we have to fight four uh, medium uh, academy ships there. What is your objective? Reform don't want us flying around in their space. Well, you know, they're civilian unarmed scouts, right? They're explorers. They're peaceful explorers. They're no threat to you, Riftborn, so don't worry about it. Don't be troubled. We're, we're no threat to, to the Riftborn. We're on the complete opposite side of the galaxy from, from the Riftborn, so uh, even if we wanted to, I don't think we would be much of a military threat to them. All right, let's go ahead and invade at Virac. See our approval right now. We're at minus 30 from systems pillaged. And we're by invading and taking over the system, we're going to go over the limit here. So our approval is going to drop by another penalty of 10. But it is, it's going to happen anyway, man. Might as well get it going. All right, we'll do preemptive bombing. That's fine. Just the preemptive bombing took him out without me even attacking with my forces. Okay. There are seven Imperial population. That's great. I like it when I can get um, Imperials before they have tr turned into something else. Like a lot of times they'll turn into Sheridan or whatever. So this way you get Imperial population and then later uh, you might get Sheridan or, or whatever, which is cool. You can see the pillage is worth very little now because we pillaged them last turn, right? So repeat pillaging is... Uh, definitely not worth it. So we're going to go ahead and occupy the system. Boom, here we go. All right, we can bring both of these guys over here now. The guard here. And you can see we still have our movement left because we didn't do a pillage. We can still fly around and do something else, like maybe start threatening Remor or something like that. Uh, or maybe getting... Uh, camp out there for a turn and let more manpower go onto our fleet. Uh, yeah, things like that. All right, so we've done the majors. Oh, yeah, there's a thing here at Gano. We need to rescue Gano. Uh, select all merge attack. You, sir, need to clear out of this system. You do not need to be here. Making things hard for our colonists. Uh, this guy has guns, so he's not effective at long range with those, so we'll stay at long range and do power to shields. And he retreated, and since he was already damaged, he was destroyed. Cool. Okay. Alright, so I'm thinking... I'm thinking I want to guard these outposts. Okay. 
so that we don't run into that again. So they're covered. Oh yeah, there's a there's a quest type thing um, called Cogito Ergo Boom, Cogito Ergo Boom. Um, search the curiosity on the planet AG42 if you're ready to sacrifice one Sophon and one Mavros population. So let's go to there. Let's put these populations back down. So we've got multiple Mavros and so on. So it actually works out. That's a good spot to actually do the quest. So we search a curiosity and we're gonna lose uh, one population of each, but we should get a bonus for 20 turns. And we complete a quest. I got 30 Hyperium. All right, so now all of our Mavros will be plus two industry and all of our Sophons will be plus two science for the next 20 turns. I don't know where we sacrificed them from, but it wasn't from here. Hmm. All right, well, we'll figure that out. Looks like for this quest, if we sort by industry output and just plan on building these, let's see, that's two turns or three turns. And then this one, maybe that's three turns. This one, that's three turns. Okay, so we'll get three of them built in three turns. And our three most uh, st strongest industry systems. So that's what our, the plan will be. And we're gonna go ahead and get our trade company next turn. All right, let's take a look at um, what we built colonize this and overwatch was built slag and sludge we're starting to build the slag and sludge centers and colonize that okay i'll uh i'll run through all of that off camera populations okay and we'll shuffle those around off camera and the mavros are now at an increased industrialist okay yeah, it'll be pretty cool as we get these populations up to 20. As long as you have one on your system, there's various bonuses you get. And uh, they can be pretty good. Some of them can be pretty good. All right. Uh, we're now through all the big heavy stuff. And we're going to be doing scouting type stuff. A bunch of scout stuff. So if we're looking, maybe start up here. I think we'll send a probe out this way. And he's got what, eight movement? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we can just make that. Okay, cool. He's going to explore around up here. All right, let's go down to here.
two probes left. Which will be fine. He'll probably head over here to Othero next turn. Used to be a pirate layer there. The lost Horatio has three probes. Nothing to see here, apparently. Flying on over here. Hopefully everything's okay. Yep. Explore I do say we've got a Ruins 4 on a Toxic, so that's going to be Endless Foundries. Yep. Very cool resource, for sure. Yeah, so this guy's gonna go this way, this guy's gonna go this way. Cool. You can see uh, the Cravers are definitely doing a number over here on the Riftborn, so they are definitely throwing down. Look before you leap. I can see there's a vision radius here. So this is obviously a Riftborn controlled system. I don't know if it's guarded or not. I could go like this and just be really clear with it. It'll take a while for those to get there anyway. Throw out some probes, kind of lick my <laughs> lick my wounds a little bit. Yeah, so it'll be all right for now. All right, so we're Nebula and the ruins. Cool. All right, and now we're down to here. This guy is still stuck, uh, no movement due to, I think it was the stars, their destiny. So it's no movement for three turns. So we're on the last turn of him being trapped and unable to move. So we definitely do not want to be going down that star lane. That is a, that is the direction we're not going. I'm going to send a probe across here to see, to maintain vision. And let's see, I have how many probes left? Two. Okay. So he's done with his turn. Ah, uh, looks like this one that's at Yugaro can go down to Zarak. Okay. This one's probably going to Nikar. So if the one, if the ship, the scout that's in Esh is probably going to Nikar. The one that's at you, and then he can send a, a probe from there to see that. So Yugaro is probably going to Zarak. He's got. Five probes. He's fully charged and ten movement. How long is this movement down here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I can send a probe, or at least get one started out this way. And this one can probably just barely make it to reveal that. And then we should have six movement left. Yep. Come down here. Send a probe over here. And explore. Subterranean four on a Baron. Metintactogen? Maybe? Yep. Let's see, so 
he's got a probe going this way. All right, so this one is going to send a probe up here. Three out of five. We'll send one here. And we'll fly down here to Kairos. Hopefully, yeah, it's not guarded. Your Craver's like, dude, man, you guys are brave. Quest one and life form three. All right, and then he'll head over to Karana next. 100 science and a proto orchid. Okay, cool. sure how much I have probably a couple ships back here one two three thinking this one come over here towards Ugaro maybe Okay. Yeah, that works. And this guy, let's see, what's this? A scout? Yeah. A scavenger. This guy is a scout? Yeah, scavenger. Okay, great. Uh, probably move this guy here towards cross. not guarded. Spica is not guarded. And I think Karas is inside the vision radius of the scout that's at Zarek right now. So I think that's a safe move right now. That Overwatch that just did this quest. Okay. Start moving him east. He's done for the turn. The guy at Zarek is done moving and shooting probes. Okay, these guys coming through to Virac. All right, let's see what we can do here. See if we can get this fleet put back to work. So I think I'm going to have all of the old school fleet gather together. All right. So there's our new school fleet. Six hundred to repair. Mm, we're just, maybe we'll hang out. Let's see what we have here to work with. Maybe we'll take out whoever's damaged. Yeah, maybe we'll just hang out here and repair for a turn. All right, and we'll and we'll leave this old school fleet here. Yeah, we'll just leave them there repairing. Um, and the Wyvern fleet will also leave them repairing. They're pretty close to full hit points. One turn and they'll be repaired, and then we'll. And we'll maybe head out to to Remore or something. So we'll, we'll give them. They've done a lot of hard work. They've been fighting fleets and invading systems and stuff. So you get one one, one turn of R and R there at the end. Uh, Virac, let's take a look at the system that we got now. He's he's upgraded it uh, with a lame thing that's super spuds. Not as good as my upgrade, but it's already done. Say 280, and we can get that, and we can get this. All right, and I'll do the rest of it off camera, but I'll go ahead and get these loaded up. 
set up those build queues. Um, I think we're just about done. Dude, yeah, he, let's see. I think I'll, I'll do the rest off camera, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get, ah, I might guard down here or I might not I have to think it over to figure out exactly what I'm going to do. I do want to guard these two outposts at least. Um, I do remember Lumeris had some fleet coming over. And so if I leave just a single ship out there, it's just going to get attacked and I'm going to have to retreat and it's going to be damaged. And so I don't know that that's worth doing. See that knife is damaged and the squire is damaged. I could maybe pull the knife and the squire back to CB. And maybe these guys can make it out there. Six. There's a, there's a Lumeris. Can't, I cannot make it. Uh, what if I drop the squire? Then I can probably make it. Oh, so close. Movements of 7, 13, 13, 5, 6. Yeah, now we can make it. Okay, we'll do that. I think I think yeah. I'm going to I'm going to play around with this. I think that'll be fine. We'll just do that. We'll bring the fleet up and we'll see if we see anything. Okay. Hey Lumaris, what's up? Remember how you were doing this to me earlier at the beginning of this turn? Yeah, not so much fun now, is it? Yeah. Well, turnabout is fair play. You were you were doing this to me at Gano, so now I'm doing it to you at Bethel. So, laws. I think we're gonna leave them in place. Um, I might end up uh, canceling this brains over bucks, uh, but then again, I may leave it in place because, like, I'm financially in insolvent, but. Um, I have some resources to sell, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I think, let's see, do we have any movement left? This dude, yeah, I'm gonna leave him guarding, I think. Maybe, I might move him up. I'm undecided. I'll figure it out off camera. Uh, so I guess we'll leave it here. Um, we'll meet back again at turn 63, uh, where we're gonna be doing this, this battle here at Zubin for the final absolution um, and they get a tier three random technology from that quest reward let's see we've completed all of our tier one and we've completed all of the tier two techs so anything that we get in tier three is going to be good i'll be happy with anything i mean some of them obviously are better than others but yeah, uh, tier three techs are good. So I look forward to it. All right, folks, we'll see you guys in the next uh, video. And thanks everyone for watching.